What is up, child of God? It's your girl, Ebony, and I'm back with another video, another word, another message from the Most High God. Hear me now. I welcome the Holy Spirit into your dwelling place, into your temple, as we elevate, as we shift the climate, as we go a little bit high. A lot of being higher with the most high God. How could we not? You know, our father is such a big God, right? Glorious, my God, marvelous, such a big God. How could we not go a lot of bit higher, okay? And so listen, I heard God said, go anyway. When I jumped on, that's why I bust out left because I heard the Holy Spirit say, go anyway, go, go, go anyway. Don't wait. Sometimes you, you can't sit there and wait on the right set, on the right. My God, let me hear it. I hear the whistleblower. Sometimes you can't wait for the whistle to blow in order for you to just go. Sometimes you got to just act on that thing even when you don't have the result. Sometimes you got to just start that thing even when you don't know the outcome. Sometimes you got to have, my God, a close up to the boko, such a high faith in the situation, no matter what they say against you. Hear me now. I hear when David was be, uh, going forth to be in the alignment of his purpose of where called, God called him to be. Mm-hmm. They called him conceited. But hear me now. Sometimes you got to act even when the world don't understand you. Sometimes you got to act when you don't even know that the light of God is uh, being revealed on the inside of you. Sometimes you got to exactly do what God has called you to do, no matter if you have the solution yet. Okay. So, yeah. Let me go here and read. Right here at the parable of the Good Samaritan. On the occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live, okay? It says, but he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And replied, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went, went away, leaving him half dead. Jesus, I love when God, like when you reading um, the word and then God don't just answer you how you expect him to flat out give you an answer. It's always a segment that has to do with something that you're going to gain um, more wisdom on or learn more. Right. And so I look at it as like you go to God for one thing, but he gave you a whole big like a whole big portion. But it's like in one segment, you understand God is such a good guy. I'm trying to tell you a priest happened to be going down to the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Sumerian, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring, and pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took care wait the next day he took out two denaries and gave them to the innkeeper look after him he said and when i return i will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have it's just the same narrative you're going to know who your neighbor is because god is the repler god is the reflection of a friend god is the reflection of a neighbor god is the outpour and outreach of how you're supposed to help within you as well so the very thing my god that you would do for a person shall be done unto you god is such a cheerful forgiver so within you it's already automatically in you to increase almost always to every situation where somebody is in doubt or in help and in need of a situation a little bit more and that's what i was saying about god 
When you draw near to him, there are times God tells you, I want you to not do this and do this. I want you to not go there and go, go. I don't, I want you to not go here and go there. I want you to not act on that situation, but I want you to act upon this way. I want you to bring forth the fruit. Even when you don't see my God, the seed of harvest, I want you to elevate. I want you to incline. Even when you don't know where I'm taking you and God is the type of God. As soon as you draw near to him, he gives you much more abundance over flow than you even ask for. You hear me? He gives you all that you can think of. My God, or imagine he gives you more than you can think of or imagine. Hear me now. Hear me now. And I hear him saying a boatload of blessings awaits thee. Hear me now. And so this is what I want to say. There are situations you come into God for when you ask him for certain things. But then when he tells you to draw near to him, he put a blessing and, and pull something out of you that you didn't even know needed to be coming out of you. And so when you come and, and my God, it brings me to this situation where I questioned, I was like, Lord, why did, how did that the demon possessed man, um, who they couldn't deliver, who had all of the, like many legions of demons in him know to come to God when he was trying. To, they was trying to chain them down. It wouldn't work. They was trying to do everything and it wouldn't work. They couldn't. They didn't have the authority, my God, to cast out what was in him. They didn't have the authority to heal the solution that he needed the healing from. They didn't have, my God, the authority, the authority to deliver what he had inside of him. And so I asked God, I said, God, how did the, the man himself know to come to him if he was already possessed? God saying, my God, we all get one, one, my God, one cup and one spirit. We all get one cup and one spirit. He says, my God, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the deceiver and the deceivers are in my hand. Hear me now. So it doesn't matter what goes on with your life and what your situation you in a human standpoint could be looking at God and asking him about one thing but as you come and you draw near to him he takes out certain things that's in a way that you're not able to understand or see and so I'm going to expose the enemy today because there are certain people thinking that they need to go back in order to get to get the answer or the solution for their life or where they are today and God is saying no my child there's a thing that's coming up against you and me and I need to go ahead and cast down divination I need to go ahead and cast down enchantment I need to go ahead and cast down those thoughts that's trying to make you go backwards to a situation I delivered you from. And so when you understand that if you do choose to go back, you go back to me. You when you when you in your mind, you got to overcome the enemy. You got to find God in every solution of where the enemy wants to try to take you back because you looking at it in your standpoint as the memory keep popping up. I see it in my eyes. I see that person in my eyes. But God is saying, no, baby, it's a trap. It's a snare. And see, I know these things because I'm the creator creator of all things. And that's why I got my son stored in you so that you may be able to hear and respond to understand that once you come to me draw near to me now I get to activate the purpose that's on the inside of you so that it has already overcame that thing and the peace that I have given to pass all to surpass all under all understanding is my God in you he says latch on to the kingdom of God and there's a portion right here where it says the cost of following Jesus he says as they were walking along the road a man said to him I will follow wherever you go Jesus replied foxes have dens and birds have nests but the son of man has no place to lay his head hmm he said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. My God, God is saying, put Jesus over that thing. You don't have to walk back to unnecessary roads in order for you to understand the lesson when God has already given you so much of a blessing inside of Jesus. And so when you come and draw near to him, he's going to give you the answer without returning to that place. Hear me now. He's going to give you the answer without having to be sunken in a low state. He's going to give you the answer that my guy wipes out enchanters and diviners and sorcerers. He's going to give you the answer. My the Akasha that executes purpose. He's going to give you the answer that gets you to the exactly the destination of where he's seen your life going upward. My God, it So you're not running around in a circle or a cycle. It Shay, because why? The generational curse breaker is inside of you. And so, my God, the generational solution is right there, risen. I love you, child of God. Be well and be blessed. God is saying, my God, execute the purpose. He says, get to the purpose of the home stretch of where I am. That's how you get to the answer. No longer do you have to go there. No longer will Bezabel be a, anything over your life. I rebuke Bezabel and bow worship. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. I want to give it to you flat out.
Sometimes you are seeing certain exes. Sometimes you are seeing certain old uh, uh, situations. I rebuke a staggering spirit. Sometimes you are seeing certain spirits in your mind that you think, my God, is the person itself, but it's puppet mastery that needs to be cast down. It's certain divination that's coming from the unknown realm that God says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness. My God, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. My God, that needs to be cast down to the bottom this pit where he has said I seen an angel coming out of heaven having a key to the bottomless pit holding in his hand a great chain to seize the dragon the ancient serpent Satan who is the devil threw him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and placed a seal upon him so he will not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years be fulfilled and so when you know that God has already over overruled that situation when he already told us I saw it Satan you hear me after Adam and Eve baby I saw Satan falling out of heaven like lightning I give it you authority. And do I give it you authority. Ha, you already been given dominion. You hear me? But I give it you authority. Hear me now. Echo shut it the boko. To trample on serpents and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. No harm will come for you. Don't rejoice that the evil spirits obey you, but rejoice that your name be written in heaven. That's right there where Jesus is. That's where he stepped, mar he stepped, marked you, posted you as he is. You belong to him. You are, you are accounted for. And so seasons of your life is not always worthy of you to return in order to get the answer. But yeah. I wanted to say that. And so, yeah, I wanted to tell the truth because... God is the way, the truth, and the life, okay? And so sometimes it's entrapment that needs to fall by the wayside into the bottomless pit where God can seal the shut, where God places a seal upon it, where it's shut up with the enemy. Sometimes it's not your mama's situation. Sometimes it's not your daddy's situation. Sometimes it's not where you came from. Sometimes it's not my my where you think your purpose to be. But my God is always in the solution that God has given you to follow him to not return a lot of the times we point the finger and we want to blame the person or we want to blame us and say we're not worthy or they wasn't worthy and this that and the third one really they just needed christ a little bit more sometimes we needed christ a little bit more sometimes we still need to follow him a little bit more I love you, child of God. Be well, be blessed, stay motivated, stay positive. This season, we breaking and we, man, we slaying every demon of witchcraft, coventry, of spell work. It will not work. It will not sustain because the one true living God is my God on the throne of your heart, of the altar, of your mind, the gatekeeper. Jesus has risen. Where do you need him? Where do you need him? Do you need him as the bridegroom? Do you need him as a shepherd over the flock? Hey, hey, Kosa, Holy Spirit testifies to him. Where do you need him? Hmm. Where do you need him at? I feel like enough said, enough explained. I love you so much. Be well, be blessed. Stay in the alignment of Christ, of where he wants you. Don't return. Bye. Remember, mercy.